Everybody, Tyler here, the Finger Lakes Regional Checking Team number 870 Rice coming out of New York. I'm here with Declan, Tom, and Matthew. And this robot, a very compact but very effective machine, will be going through, of course, following that full cargo journey through uh, some unique uh, turret action I want you to check out, all here coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Striker Careers. First alumni and mentors are making Striker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Striker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Competition season is here. Head on over to thebluelines.com to catch all the events each week. Don't forget to submit your clips of the week to discord.gg forward slash first updates now. Vote in the FRC Top 25 and play in our free fantasy pick'em. Catch fun shows live on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Tom, we're going to start with your intake on your robot here. Talk to me about just some of the uh, processes that went into it and what made you choose this type of intake. All right, so the intake took around a month to build. It was by far the longest thing that was in, in our build process. So the main thought was like, we wanted something that could pop out of the robot and get smacked around a little bit. So it's like, I mean, if we undo the Velcro, the Velcro's there, so in the autonomous period, it doesn't go outside the bumper frame. But once it pulls off, you can see it. We can smack it against walls and stuff. It comes up and down. If we get smacked from the side, it uh, turns in both sides too. So it looks like you got a constant force spring uh, and a very compliant intake as you said on there as well. So when you're looking from a strategy perspective, uh, you you were looking at having that type of intake on yep. there. How have you seen that actually play out in the actual game though on the field? How does it, uh, on the field it works amazing. We had a few issues with a bearing popping out, but it didn't affect our gameplay at all. The intake could still spin. The balls were still getting sucked in. The only thing was it was getting stuck inside a little bit, but we were able to fix it. Let's keep moving on your robot. We'll talk about your uh, shooter as it goes up into there. Tom's going to talk a little bit more about right. that. So talk to me about uh, your, I really want to hear about the turret. looks like some custom 3D printing possibly too on this. Uh, uh, so talk to yeah. me what's going into it. So we went with a turret. I mean, last year was our first year ever using a turret and it's kind of a no brainer. You could pretty much, and having the limelight and the turret, it pretty much tracks it anywhere you go. We have about, I think it was, I think two, 260 degrees because the climb does get in the way, so we don't have 360, but I mean, having the turret was lights out. It's a big help. And we went with the, we went with the two, uh, two wheel shooter because you could control distance and the amount of backspin on it. And instead of shooting balls way high, we thought that a little bit of backspin and kind of placing it soft into the, to the goal was the way to go. When you're looking at, uh, from a, a game uh, design wise, so you have a sword drive with the turret as well yeah. too. Uh, what made you feel it was necessary to have both of those uh, options to go with? Well, having the swerve drive, I mean, having the swerve drive helps with people playing defense on you. It helps with shooting. You can move around so much easier, so much simpler than having the turret also. I don't know if both were definitely necessary, but having both is definitely an advantage. Yeah, it gives you the versatility, right, yeah. that you're looking for in that. Yeah. Uh, and then I want to ask you in regards to uh, your Colson wheels on here. So it looks like you have... Uh, some larger Colson wheels with the smaller ones on the yeah. inside. How have you, uh, when you were testing, how did you figure out that was kind of best for like channeling the ball? I mean, we started we started with just two, but then as the ball gets compressed, this one do it doesn't do much, but a little bit of contact on that one helps with the backspin and and how far the ball is gonna travel. Well, let's wrap up in the robot talking about your climber there. Matthew's gonna cover that. Uh, Climber's definitely been a very effective tool for your team so far. Talk to me about in regards to like how important it was to have this climber and then let's walk through the effectiveness of it as well. Well, the climber we have right now wasn't exactly our original climber. We started off with a much more, I would say, complicated climber where some, an arm swung out, but earlier in this match it broke. And so we took it off and we just went with the simpler straight up and down climber. These hooks here, we, went, we used a CNC machine and we cut those out and at least 10 different variations to find the right one for it to be able to slide off. Slide off when we had our second hook, but now they work fine without it. And the way we use this to go up, we have a bunch of surgical tubing on the back and they're, they have a lot of tension on them. So when you release this key down here, this hook, the thing just shoots up and it'll stay up until we hit on the hook. And for it to pull up, we have this rope right here and we channel it through to the other side. Where over here, we actually have a winch which pulls it up and then it'll pull us right up. It's pretty quick and efficient. 
So you mentioned that uh, your climber did break as well too. Are you looking at repairing it so you can do a traversal? Yes. We're planning on pre pl repairing it once we get back from this competition, but for sure. right now so we're going to leave it like this, yeah. Once we get back to our home. Well, it's uh, despite having a broken climber that you've repaired and it still looks like you're doing all right with it, your team is doing quite well as we record this in the top eight and you got a great shooter to accomplish it. So we wish you best of luck during the competition and uh, good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First, alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.